Hello, I'm Mary Lyle. I'm the Director of Education for the Western Heritage Museum in Lee County Cowboy Hall of Fame. And today I'm going to be talking about horseshoes. This one, large horseshoe. This one is not so big, is it? Horseshoes come in different shapes and sizes. And they, the way the horse's hoofs are shaped makes a difference and what the purpose of that horse is used for also makes a difference in the kind of shoe it wears and the shape of it and we'll find out more when we visit with a real life farrier. Now I do want to discuss some of the lore of the horseshoe. They hang them over doors and in some cultures you're going to hang the horseshoe like a U and that is so it catches all of the luck. All the luck falls in. If you want to protect from something evil, evil spirits, you are going to hang it this way. It is going to depend on what culture, what country you're in, this is a symbol that has been around for a long, long time. It resembles a crescent moon. In ancient times, the moon and the different phases of the moon were connected with a lot of mystical things. Good luck, bad luck. So if you're going to put it up, you're going to have to nail it. And you can see there's certain nail holes here. Now it looks like they are six holes. Originally they used to put seven, seven nails into the shoe and that is because seven was considered a lucky number, a sacred number in fact, and so the number seven was often used in a horseshoe. We are going to go to Helen Knave's ranch. We will meet the farrier and we will watch him as he goes about his work. Why do you have to put shoes on a horse? Well, where they're going, they're going to the Gila Wilderness and it's real rocky, rough trails. Uh -huh. And I just protect their feet. Okay, but the ones that are wild don't have any shoes. Well, it's because they're, they was born and raised there and he had, he's been on this grass patch and in the sand and uh, <laughs> so if he'd been, if he'd just been born up there and, and his feet was used to it, he'd probably been all right. He's What's like banjo. Banjo. Hey, Banjo. How are you? How? He's about seven. He's seven. He's very pretty. Oh my gosh, he's a big guy. Yeah, uh, this is a Belgian draft, and uh, he rides in packs. Mike, what size shoe does he wear? A five. So you have have them already sized and everything? Yeah. All the different horses have different size shoes that they wear. And, okay. Uh, that this measuring with the ruler, he's like seven inches across on his feet. He's got a, a fire over here, he heats them and, and bends them. But so he's cleaning the dirt out. That V, that V on there, is, that's called the frog, and that's where the uh, blood pump, that's the blood pump's right there. Okay. And, uh, and then the, the toe is down there on the end, and uh, back by the the top up there that's that's called the heel okay. yeah he's rather has big feet doesn't he yeah <laughs> he's a big horse the, we got him from the Amish people up in uh, Illinois oh really and uh, they this horse can he pulls a cart and they uh, used him to on the farm they they pulled plows and stuff with him and what well, is what Mike he, doing he's yes. trimming trimming that trimming the uh, wall off to get it even so they can put a shoe on it. Okay. Because their feet grow like their fingernails. It's just they had to trim them off and then get it okay. Get it level. Got to go. They, they go, they pack 20 miles back in there and they ride them uh, steep, steep terrain. And, uh huh. And, uh, and it's, it's the, I said the heat of wilderness, pretty rough. Does it hurt? They don't act like it does. They don't <laughs> act like it does? Like later. How long have you been doing this? Well, I had to learn when I was a kid, so. You 
just work um, on several different branches. You go different places. Yeah, people all over the place. You have to know what you're doing and where to put the nail in. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah you can. The white line and out. You're getting too far in there. They call that a hot nail. If they get it the wrong spot. Hot nail. Are you going to have to adjust the yeah, shoes? Yeah, I need to spread them. Okay. And these, these shoes are too big to, to hammer cold, so okay. I use a little fire. Alright. So you've got to get the fire hot enough. And the, there's the shoes. Okay. And what do the nails look like that you use? Well, the shoes are made out of iron. Yeah, steel. Steel. Are there any yeah. any other? There's a little kind of. The racehorses. What kind of shoes would they wear? So they're lighter weight. They're light, and they got the grab, the grab in the front. Natural balance shoes. They got different purposes. Wow! And so, what kind of horse would wear that one? Well, some that's got problems that needs to release all the way around. Okay. And this, this kind of toe brings that toe back. Plastic shoe. You can glue on or nail on, but I ain't had no luck glue them on. Oh my goodness! When did those come out? How long have those been around? Been around for a long time? For a while. Oh, let me see that. They're red hot now. to the anvil, I noticed that one, that part is where he's we curving can, it. Yeah, we can bend it and another flat. Uh-huh. So he sort of has an eye for it. He yeah. Nice when you have one that 
don't blow fit. There's some horses that don't stand real good. Really? Oh yeah. It makes the horseshoe day a long day. He's pretty easy to get on board. And that's a that's a finished foot. you enjoyed our visit to Helen Naves Ranch and learned a lot about horseshoeing from Mike the Farrier. <laughs> <laughs>